friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this series of video lectures, we've been talking about wastewater treatment process in a typical wastewater treatment facility. And we are almost at the end of our lecture series. We've started to talk about the overview of wastewater system. We started to talk about the preliminary wastewater system, the primary wastewater system, the secondary wastewater system, the tertiary wastewater system. And we know that in each of these steps, especially in the primary wastewater system, in the secondary wastewater treatment, the primary and secondary wastewater treatment results in the accurate, like, like at the result of production of sludge, the large flocculants the large components which are separated from the water in the bottom of the primary sedimentation tank and secondary sedimentation tank. And as they are separated from the wastewater in the settling tanks, we simply take out all those components, all those uh, sludge, and we simply use the sludge for further processing. And that's what is known as the solids handling facility in a wastewater treatment plant. Solids handling facility deals with the sludge, which is the solid particle. Remember, the solid particles are produced from the preliminary step. But the preliminary wastewater treatment produces and prevents solid particles, which are mostly plastic, large components, uh, many other household objects that are dropped into the sewage. So we, do, we are not going to deal with that. So they are thrown away at the very beginning, the grids which are thrown away at the very beginning. So what we are dealing here, we are dealing with only those solids which are collected in the primary sedimentation tank during the primary wastewater treatment and the sludge which is stored in the secondary sedimentation tank at the end of the secondary wastewater treatment. So uh, the sludge treatment uh, contains several different stages. Three separate modified versions, modified stages uh, need to continue. Sequentially, it begins with the thickening of the sludge, then the digestion of the sludge, and then finally dewatering of the sludge. Because thickening is really important because thickening allows us to handle the sludge properly in the next round because the sludge is huge amount. So thickening is really important, condensing is really important. The digestion also required to reduce the amount of the sludge in very less concentration. So this. This digestion means simply we heat up the sludge to digest and also kill any, any unwanted material that is present. And finally, dewatering because after digestion, the sludge takes up a lot of moisture. So we need to dewater the sludge to make it much more condensed and dehydrated so that we can we can produce like a powder and we can produce a sludge cake that can be utilized as a landfill later once. So let's first uh, talk about, so see, this, these are the modifications. So sludge is primarily collected in two different locations of the wastewater treatment facility. One is uh, at the end of the primary wastewater treatment facility in the primary settlement tank where the sludge is settled and in the secondary settlement tank. So in both primary and secondary settlement tank, the excess sludge is transported uh, into the solids handling facility. In the solids handling facility, that sludge is thickened, then it's digested, then dewatered produce very thick solid structures and that can be used for disposal as, uh, as a disposal landfill or for agricultural use and landscaping all this purpose we can use that sludge material but at the end because the sludge produced at the beginning is not usable it's, it's with water it's with a lot of infective germs and stuff so we need to kill that with digestion as well so let's talk about this series on sequence of sludge processes in details the very first step is thickening of the sludge and sludge thickening is done with the help of this, you know, centrifuge like uh, thing. You know, it's simply, uh, this This is the gravity thickener. The gravity thickener is something like it's small rotating unit is there like, like grill shape. The slab to rotate small one at a time as a result of which uh, inflow of water and this is the outflow of the liquid that is present in the sludge and anything of the very solid components are getting stored to the bottom. So the moment this rotor is rotating very slowly, the water content of the sludge is being transferred to the sludge liquor and the rest of the sludge is being settled to the bottom. And this is known as the thickened sludge. That's how we use the gravity thickener to thicken the sludge a little bit. So once the sludge is uh, thickened enough, and then the second stage is the digestion of the sludge. And as I said, the sludge contains a lot of microorganisms and it is filled with odor. So we need to kill the microorganisms, reduce the odor. And the best possible way is to he heat that sludge. So we put that sludge in, we use high temperature to heat it. And it produces a lot of gas because of the depth 
of the microorganisms and chemical reaction continuing gas is removed by a gas chamber through that through the gas nozzle so after the heating of the sludge inside the chamber we have different layers of the sludge we have the scum layer means all the layers filled with fat components floating on the top then we have the supernatant means we have a lot of water content on the top because you know they receive a lot of moisture during this heating process and then we have active sludge then at the bottom most portions of this chamber we have stabilized sludge now what's the difference between these two active sludge and stabilized sludge active sludge is the one which contains the microorganisms it contains all the sludge qualities that means it has the microorganisms that will continue to do the job of uh, because if you use that sludge in a wastewater that can uh, provide nutrients to the microbes in the wastewater to survive so that's active but the stabilized sludge is the one which can no longer now act as active sludge it, it, it does not have any microorganisms living in it and its chemical property is also being modified so it's modified so much that it is no longer be able uh, to help and providing nutrients to a growing microorganisms in the secondary treatment so this is the stabilized sludge so our idea here in the digestion chamber is to make stabilized sludge, to stabilize the sludge as much as we can because the more we make the stabilized sludge, we take out the stabilized sludge from the chamber and then we do the third step of the process. You see, these are the sludge heating uh, chambers and you can see that huge, huge chambers and these are the gaseous modules are placed so that the gas that is produced during the heating can go out. You can see these huge chambers uh, where the temperature is increased, the sludge is being digested and the excess components are, the reactive sludge components are converted to stabilized sludge component. And after the stabilized sludge is produced, the third and final step of sludge handling or solids handling is dewatering of the sludge. Because as I said that in that heating chamber, there are supernatant, there are active sludge and then at the bottom most part there is this stabilized sludge. So the sludge produced here, uh, dewatering is a very important step because uh, dewatering reduces the volume of the sludge so that it's easy to carry that so our transport cost gets reduced. That's why we need to dewater the sludge. So you take out that the stabilized sludge into large scale centrifuge. As you can see in this picture, we can use the centrifuge. In the centrifuge, uh, it rotates in high uh, velocity, the rotor, as a result of which those large solid particles are settled to the bottom as pellet and the water is separated as supernated. So we take out the water and we take the sludge as many solid components and it looks something like this at the end of sludge thickening. It's like that black because it's rich with carbon. Uh, is digested as well so it's black uh, humus like material like a soil like black soil that's the structure ultimately we produce we, we then transport the sludge into landfills landscaping as well so those things can be done now uh, in, in wastewater treatment facilities we have modern machines we can do all in one job for solids handling so single machine can do all the job it has a thickening zone a dewatering zone and a digestion zone separately connected to it so it can do all this job thickening and uh, then it's transported to digestion and comes out from the digestion dewateration will also be done by that same machine it's a long machine but it can do all the job on its own so that's uh, that's another important feature that right now is involved but uh, in old school value i can say that all these three steps are important because uh, thickening uh, increases uh, the, the production value as well as uh, the, the digestion is required to make it stable and uh, finally the dehydration of the sludge is required uh, to reduce the cost of transporting. Okay, So all these three steps are equally important. Now the final thing is uh, what is the difference between sludge thickening and sludge dewatering? Now the difference here is in thickening it produces consistent thickened sludge, prevent clogging of the sludge pump, improve biogas production in anaerobic digester. Now remember one thing, the moment we do this thickening in anaerobic digester, it produces methane, the biogas. And the moment it's producing methane and the biogas, we can run machines with this gas as an energy source. So that's why most of these thickening machines are 
using the energy produced by the biogas to run that machine. That's why it can reduce the cost of solids handling a little bit. So that's what we use. The amount of biogas produced is stored in the gas chamber and that's used to run that same thickening machine. So that's what we do. The primary benefits of thickening is simply operational improvement so that our machines remain healthy, the, the pumps never get clogged and things like that. Okay. On the other hand, dewatering is done at the end and after the digestion dewatering is done. Dewatering is done at the end because this is the portions where it creates cost savings because uh, the polymer consumption and produces large stackings of, of, of this sludge like a very dry and compact structure. The benefit here is cost savings because the more compact the structure is, uh, the better is for us to transport it, to manage it, to handle it in the future work. Because sludge is not in there, we need to now transport it and use it for different reasons. So that's all regarding the solids handling of the wastewater treatment. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that. I hope you've watched all the videos of this lecture series of wastewater treatment process. If you haven't watched that now, you will surely get benefit. So continuing with the overview of the wastewater system throughout the process of preliminary wastewater system, primary wastewater system, secondary wastewater system, tertiary wastewater system, and then finally the solids handling facility and the sludge management. All of this is a part of the wastewater system. And a perfectly balanced wastewater system facility, everything is under scrutiny and perfect control of, of the quality control. And if everything is working fine, we can convert raw sewage into a drinking water. So that's all about it. So stay tuned and watch the series of lectures. Thank you.